Did you know that mountain climbing is one of the most exciting, challenging, and thrilling activities in life? Many of you don't realize it, but each and every one of you here today is a mountain climber. Some of my greatest adventures in life have been climbing mountains. I can remember Mount Baker just as if I had taken my boots and crampons off last night. We were sit there on the mountain for four days in this thick, soupy fog. Sharon, we had a hard time even to seeing as far as where you were at. We had a break in the clouds one day and we scampered up to the summit and as we came back down to our base camp, we ended up in a whiteout, a snow blizzard. We decided we didn't want to take any of that. We're going to take a shortcut on the way home to a, looked on the map and saw a wilderness road and we were going to go through Avalanche Gorge. Well, we headed down and the snow turned into a torrential downpour. And we started to slip on the wet rocks. And then we realized there was no trail. The front guy would fall through this thicket of briars as the briars would rip on your pants. And you would stumble through. And it took us 12 hours to go three miles that day, only at the end of the 12 hours, to find out that we were in the bottom of a box canyon looking up at a 70-foot waterfall. It was at that point, I'm sure you're asking, boy, this doesn't sound like fun. Well, that very same thought occurred to me at the time. And I was ready to quit. My brother began to encourage me. And you know, it wasn't 40 minutes later when we found the most beautiful road you've ever seen right there in the wilderness. You know, it was my brother who carried me through that day. Then there was Mount Baker, or uh, excuse me, Mount Rainier. And we started out at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning from base camp, and we were heading up Emmons Glacier. And the winds were blowing about 20 to 30 miles in your face. And for every two steps you took forward, you'd get blown back one. And it was snowing, not the white fluffy stuff, but it felt like hail pelting on your face. And other teams of climbers were coming down, and we just said, it's getting worse. And so we all got together, and we, six of us, and we prayed, and we said, God, clear up this storm. And you know, it wasn't 20 minutes later that the storm quieted down. You know, it was God that carried me through that day. And then there was, lastly, Mount, and we're getting up close to the top, and at 14,000 feet, it's pretty hard to breathe. You're sitting there trying to lean over on your ice axe, trying to breathe in every oxygen molecule that you can find around. And you know, all you're thinking about is, let me crawl back in my sleeping bag. I don't want to go anymore. But then you realize you're roped up to somebody, and everybody's egging you on. You know, it was the faith of my, or the support of my friends that day that carried me. And what an opportunity it was to stand on top of the mountaintop and shout, Hallelujah! Victory! Yes, we did it. You know, and the awesome realization that you're just a little pinprick on the face of the earth, and then you realize that you have to climb all the way back down. But you know, for me, some of the personal challenges that I've had in life have been some of the bigger mountains that I've had to climb. You know, I look back at those, and those were probably the tougher mountains to climb in my life. I remember the mountains of 1989. And one of the mountains of devastation of having to defend my PhD thesis three days before my wedding only to find out that they wanted me to do two more years worth of research work. And then it was the shock of waking up as newlyweds only a couple months later at 3 o'clock in the morning to the amazing realization that your house is ablaze in fire. And then two days later, the disillusionment coming when you receive a phone call that one of your parents had a major brainstem stroke and probably wouldn't walk or talk or even wake up from his coma. Then there were the mountains that I had in 1992. That year harvesting 250 acres of corn and having to dump every single bushel on the ground because of a cool growing season and early frost that made every kernel unmarketable. But that was nothing compared to the other mountain that I had to climb. And that was the difficult task of being part of an unsuccessful search and rescue team using dogs and helicopters and climbing deep down in the crevasses trying to locate the body of my brother that was buried in a mountain climbing accident. But even more impossible mountain to climb that year was trying to drive his car home from Canada with the realization that I'd never be able to give him another hug or a kiss goodbye. And maybe that was all preparation for the mountains of 1996 and the difficult task of admitting my mother to the hospital with severe congestive heart failure and then all having to sit beside the bedside of your loving father, who in my case was one of my best friends and was truly a gentle giant, and to sit by his bedside and to hold his hand as he breathed his last breath of life. 
But you know, I didn't realize that my mom had given me a little card when I was in graduate school and how important that would be in terms of a foundation in my life. And on that little card she had written, she had this simple statement. She said, a person's greatness is not determined by his or hers wealth or accomplishments, but by what he or she overcomes in life. And you know, in overcoming in life, I've learned a few things that have helped me climb those mountains. First, I've realized is you never climb alone. There was many times where I thought I was the only one out there climbing that mountain. And it wasn't until I realized that I couldn't do it alone that I began to draw on the strength of my faith in God, that I began to draw on the strength of the love of my family, that I began to draw on the strength of the support of my friends. That's what carried me through, is not climbing it alone. Second of all, I learned that you don't quit too short or quit too soon. You know, there was many times where I was ready to cry out and say, God, I can't take anymore. I can't go on. You know, it was those times I realized that I didn't want to be that person who stopped just short of finding the road in the wilderness or stopped just short of the storm calming down or stopped just short of reaching the summit even though the breaths and the steps were hard to take. And then thirdly, that I've realized is that when you're climbing the mountains in life that you need to enjoy the climb and enjoy the view from the summit. You know, it's interesting to tell that out of we climbing on that day, we were only 12 people that made it to the top of Mount Rainier out of 150 people that attempted to summit on that 4th of July weekend. I'm also glad to say that I finished my PhD. The house was rebuilt. My dad was miraculously healed, was able to walk and to talk again, and had seven more wonderful years with my family. I now farm more acres than I did in 1992. I'm going to be glad to the day when I can be with my brother and my dad in heaven and climb some more mountains together. But we've got to keep pressing on. And maybe you in this room today are facing your own mountains. Maybe it is a Mount Baker or a Mount Rainier or a Mount Shasta. Maybe you find yourself down in the bottom of Avalanche Gorge staring up at a 70-foot waterfall wondering where can I go from here. But keep the principles in mind. Remember, don't climb alone. That's when you realize that you need to nurture your faith in God, to nurture the love of your family, to nurture the support of your friends. That's what's going to carry you through. Depend on those, not your own strength. The second of all, don't quit too soon. Oftentimes, when you're ready to quit, you don't realize that the breakthrough is just ahead. And then lastly, enjoy the climb, because the day is always brighter after the darkest night. And so, whatever mountain that you're climbing today in life, keep pressing on. Be that victorious mountain climber. And always remember that there was an Easter after a certain Good Friday. That there's always the dawn of a new day even after the darkest night. And that after every valley that's as difficult to go through, there's always a glorious mountain top. So keep pressing on. Don't climb your mountains alone. Don't stop too short. And of course, enjoy your climb and be that victorious mountain climber in life.